What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball to Bowl series. And as you guys know by now, the Ball to Bowl series is an opportunity for come home to connect with real men about real things. Today, we got a special guest, as always, my guy, Mike Atori. Mike, straight out of New York. Mike, talk to the people and give them a quick introduction of yourself, man. What's up, guys? I realize I'm looking down at my computer, but I got to look at you a little bit, too, for anyone watching. Uh, my name is Michael Atori. Uh, I've been a strength coach in some shape or form for 10 years. I've lived in New York City uh, for coming up on four years. I've been a, a proud, bald man, shaved head, bald man for coming up on three years now. Yeah, you know, uh, and have have my hands in a few different things uh, business wise within the, the fitness world. And uh, I am who I am today because of who I've grown into and being bald is part of that. So I'd love to be a part of this with you, man. My man, my man, no doubt, no doubt. Mike, we know you are in New York now, and we could talk about New York sports all day between the Knicks, the Nets. Actually, let's, we got to make you choose right now. Who you got, Knicks or Nets, based on your short time in the city? I mean, I live in Manhattan. It's It'd be easier to probably get to Madison Square Garden at times, but just based on what part of the city I like more, I prefer to be a Brooklyn. I'd rather go over to Brooklyn and watch the Nets play. <laughs> you know, one thing I didn't realize, bro, that because, you know, obviously, the, I mean, let's be real. The Knicks have sucked for a long time um, and yeah, they're, they're yeah. getting better. Right. They're getting better. Made the playoffs yeah. last year. Had a, you know, had a decent little run. Obviously, the Nets, you know, got, you got the star power down there in Brooklyn. But what I didn't realize is regardless how crazy the garden is. Oh, yeah. Like the garden, even like when they're not the best team, the crowd is in there. It's crazy. It's rocking. I saw the playoff game last year and I was like, what in the world? That's insane. So yeah. I love to have you been to the garden yet for a game. Uh, yeah, a long, long time ago. But my my main thing that I remember about the garden was uh, I think I was in fifth grade. I went to a St. John's basketball game. It was St. John's versus Duke. And. Uh, we got to go on the court afterwards and, and go into the locker rooms for a little bit. But the biggest thing that stood out to me is when I was walking behind the bleachers, you could see the ice underneath. You could see the skating rink underneath the panels for the basketball court. And at, at the time, my brain just could not fathom that as a kid. Uh, so that that's always been my biggest takeaway is that so many things like the, the Madison Square Garden is just monumental for yeah. so many things, right, in, in terms of sports and entertainment. But uh, but what I will say is it's in a pretty shitty part of town. Penn State <laughs> is not the nicest area of New York City between 8th Avenue and 9th Avenue and 34th Street. It ain't that great. <laughs> hey, Madison Square Garden, we love you, man. But shout yeah. out to my dog. No disrespect. <laughs> no disrespect. We love the arena, but potentially clean up the area. That's all we're saying, folks. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Uh, so we know you're from um, living in New York now. We didn't get to where you're actually from, which actually seg segues to my next question, man. Like one thing about the brand, you know, it's called Come Home. We always like to talk to guys about the idea and concept of home, what that actually means for people. So when you hear that word home, what does that bring up for you, Mike? Obviously, I got to think about my family first, my parents, my siblings, the household I grew up in. I often refer back to my childhood because... I'm so fortunate for how I was raised in the environment that I was raised in and what I was exposed to and I'm still exposed to at times. Um, and also have my next door neighbor and got to play in the woods and get poison ivy every other week. Like I, I know that not everyone had the type of resources or childhood that I had. And that's part of what motivates me is to be able to give back and to provide for other people that did not grow up in the type of environment I did. Um, so when to, to answer your question about come home, I, I think about my family and it's still the same house that I grew up in, which is in Norwalk, Connecticut. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Did that make you a Yukon guy growing up or? No, I was, so my, my parents were, uh, from Pittsburgh originally. So I support everything Pittsburgh and, uh, obviously went to a few Yukon football games and basketball games, but I wasn't, I wasn't that, that close to it. That's a good. That's good to hear because I want to hear your thoughts on Big Ben saying goodbye this year. <laughs> okay, all right. Talk to me, man. Talk to me. So I, I tell you something funny. Uh, 2004 was the first, was the year he was drafted, and my dad had gotten me this booklet of uh, it was all blank lines, but it was every draft pick, and it was the mm -hmm. first draft that I followed that closely. Where I was writing everyone down, 
and uh, you know that was the whole Eli Manning, Philip Rivers saga, and then Big Ben, and uh, everyone watched Big Ben mature uh, over over the years between busting his ass on a motorcycle and getting in some trouble with the law as well. And now seeing him retire, it's, well, that was the last 18 years of my life, yeah. which is damn, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> first off, but we lost all the stability in the organization. So I'm, I'm thankful for Mike Tomlin and everyone else in the organization. Uh, I'm speaking about them like I'm part of it, which I am. I got season yeah. tape. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's we're in a little bit of transition. So we'll see what happens with, with our quarterback position. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt, man. Shout out to the Steelers fans, the terrible towel, wherever y'all at. Right. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens next year. Around me. I usually have to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have these things, Mike. You got to have them. <laughs> so, dude, man, um, you know why we're here, though. You know why we're here, man. Like I said, you're killing it today. We see you. Beard is smooth. Ball head is smooth. You know, killing it today. Tiny, you know what I'm saying? You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but I know you didn't always have that, man. I know back in the day, you didn't always have this smooth look. So take us back a little bit, bro. As far as you can remember, whether it's middle school or high school, start me there. Tell me what kind of hair you had, and let's walk through your journey. All right, I'll, I'll paint a little picture for you. We're going to go back to Norwalk, Connecticut, All Saints Catholic School. I went to preschool, and then I went to uh, the kindergarten through eighth grade with pretty much the same kids every year, all 90 students. And I remember in fifth grade specifically winning the superlative of best hair. Mm. Uh, I, had, I had the ski slope. You know, like the little ski jump. And I used to use the blow dryer and comb it up and uh, took pride in my hair for, for a long period of time. Another part of this, I specifically remember in sixth grade, we were standing up. Uh, I think either there was something that was going on. We either had to say a prayer. It, either way, we were all standing. And I remember these two girls in the back saying, oh, look at Michael. He shaves his legs. And I was thinking to myself, no, I don't. I just don't have any hair on my legs. And I remember that summer begging for hair on my body. And now, <laughs> I'm, a wolf. now I'm a wolf. I got hair everywhere else other than the top of my head. Uh, so we get, to, we get to high school. And looking back, I didn't even really care about my hair. I just had this ugly buzz cut all the time. And I uh, grew into a little bit more of a man. Okay. And then from college is when I started caring about my looks a little bit differently. Uh -huh. And even had the little pierced earrings for yes, one time. You, see, you see me with the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little drip, you little know, ear I, drip. I had a little, yeah, but mine wasn't, mine wasn't drip. Mine was Claire's piercings for 10 bucks. <laughs> and uh, it was a little bit of a Guido phase for a couple summers in New Haven, Connecticut. But the reason I bring that up is to segue into that I had this really nice faux hawk for about two years. Mm. And I would get it cut every Wednesday morning. It was only 12 bucks if I went to this one barber in college. Uh, I had the, the perfect faux hawk, faded up, went around the back, gelled it up every day, took care of it. Uh, didn't really grow the facial hair out as much at the time, didn't know how to style it. And I remember uh, one, one time at, I mean, I remember guys complimenting me on my hair at, at times anyway, but there was one specific time I was in the cafeteria in college my senior year and this big dude kind of like tuna who we got to give a shout out to <laughs> for connecting us but someone similar to that type of guy was like bro your hairline man like i've never seen such a nice hairline and uh and this was in college yeah so i was 20 or 21 years old at this point so you were still super strong in college then with the hairline yeah uh reversed right the hair was up here it wasn't <laughs> and uh i'd say it was when i when I graduated and I started working in a gym, I worked at a gym that was, it was, a, it was a YMCA and it was an older demographic. And that's when I was like, all right, maybe I don't need to have the faux hawk anymore. And I uh, started switching up how I styled my hair. And uh, do you remember the undercut? Remember people would get that buzz? It would, it would be a buzz cut right here. It was a straight line. And then you kind of like comb it this way. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the undercut. And I had that. But then as I would get the undercut, my head, my forehead started turning into a five head and my forehead just kept getting bigger. And uh, I would say I was probably 23 at this point. And that's when I started getting in my head about it. And I knew, I knew I was learned, I, I was seeing it and I would take photos of it and look in the mirror. I'm sure you did it plenty of times. And uh, I remember also at the time, obviously my, 
my brother's seven or eight years older than me and he's he's been bald for a bit so i had a feeling that this is where i was headed so uh this one gym i was working at with at the time was partnered with an internist and this doctor would run different types of blood panels and hormone tests and so i get all these tests done and my testosterone was really high and a lot of it was converting into five alpha reductase which is male pattern baldness and uh i i also remember because i was in my head about this so much that i'd be out at bars talking about five alpha reductase i'd be talking <laughs> about you know people be like yo bro you're stressed you know you're stressed i'm like i am not stressed i am hormonal first off i got i got a plethora of testosterone running through my veins that i'm losing my hair so i I uh, had an opportunity to, to go on medication to try to stop it. So uh, I'm blanking on the name of it, but uh, went on medication. This is going to take a quick turn, by the way. So yeah, I go on this, medication. Um, go ahead. Like a pill, pill type medication. Do yeah. You remember um, a finasteride? Yes. Okay. So I go on this shit, and this is where I said it was going to take a turn. Um, so. Maybe the hair stopped for a little bit, but months later, I all of a sudden have a very uncomfortable pain in my groin. And I didn't, anyone who watches this is now going to learn this. I think the only person in my family that knew about it was my, my father, because I told him a little bit about it. But it was to the point I had to get all these tests done uh, because doctors thought I either had some type of testicular cancer uh, or some other things going on in my bladder. So I went through all these tests for like four or five months. I was physically in pain, but I wouldn't show it to my clients. So I even had to change the way I was walking and, and, and performing in front of them. And I fast forward a few months, I find out that- the question, were you supposed to still be like going to work and training in that pain? Or they were like, doc was like, it's okay, you could keep- They, no one knew what it was. Cause every test I got was like, ah, it looks like there's some inflammation, but no, okay. no red flags. And then, oh, actually, I love that you asked that. So this guy was a big so Tony Soprano looking type guy. And he uh, he pulls me into his office. He closes the door and he's like, you're in your head, bro. You're in your head. You don't have any pain. I'm like, man, I'm telling you, I didn't have this pain three weeks ago. I'm not a grown ass man yet. I'm not 80 years old. Like I shouldn't be experiencing this type of discomfort. He didn't make the correlation between the medication I was taking and the discomfort I had. And that's exactly what it was. Was so it a sharp pain, pain, bro? Or just like a soreness? It was, it was uh, throbbing, throbbing I pain. Throughout the, whole day. the only way to describe it. Uh, and, you know, it's just this wild experience, the come to moment of, wow, here I am trying to prevent my hair loss and I'm putting my body in discomfort because of it. Mm. So decided to go off the medication. I knew eventually this is, this is your fate. Right. And I still was in my head. So this was from 23 to maybe 27 years old. Um, the other part of this that I haven't shared yet is I wanted to shave my head, but I felt like I couldn't because of my skin. I've always had a struggle with acne in high school. I went on Accutane for years for actually a full year. I went on it. Um, uh, so six month bouts of on like the, one of the most hardcore drugs for acne, uh, which I can manage better now, but the back of my head still has a condition that no dermatologist could figure out for a while. So until I could get that covered, I wasn't ready to shave my head. And when I moved to New York City in 2018, I remember my brother saying, look, there's all these dermatologists, like some of the top dermatologists in the world, they got to figure this out. So um, someone did. I still use a medication. It's still something that affects me at times. I'm self-conscious about it or I'll, I'll wear a hat because I know the back of my head's broken out a little bit. I had a, a videographer with me on Friday, uh, Friday morning. We filmed, actually, it was one of the Bulgarian bag stuff that you just saw. And he's like, anything else you want from me? I was like, yeah, no shots of the back of my head. And he's like, that's <laughs> odd. And I'm like, <laughs> like I just don't, I don't want to see it in case it's inflamed or I got some, some acne going on. Uh, so it wasn't until I got that under wraps or so Mike, again, I'm going to jump in here, Mike, because um, I have a similar issue. Like I, I was shaving electric for a long time and everything was fine. Everything was fine. But right. you know, now that I'm like a ball spokesman, I talk to all these ball guys and there's this thing in the ball community. I don't know if you've heard it, but you know, some guys would be like, Oh, you, you're not using a razor. Are you still using electric? Ah, uh, you're not real. 
So yeah. it got in my hair for a while. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try. Maybe a razor is a level up. So I decided I was going to try a mm -hmm. razor. Dog, that thing bumped me up so bad. Oh, and I was like, I was stuck. I was, I, I, was, I was pissed. I was like, yo, what in the world? So, you know, I'm thinking, okay, it's going to go away quickly. I'm just using yeah. something like, you know, I think I'm using a clear cell at first. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. Not going away. Went to the dermatologist. They gave me some like steroid creams, whatever. I'm applying these. So it lives like a year, a year fight using these creams day in, day out, trying to get it to like um, basically clear my skin back up. And even yeah. today, it's not 100% clear. It's much clearer than it was in that battle. But I had a similar thing when I was going through that. I was wearing hats 24 seven, like, you know, and imagine me trying to build this company, right? Like I'm the, yeah. like, hey, look at me, I'm the ball guy. And I'm like wearing hats all the time, right? It was super yeah. uncomfortable because it's like, I feel like I was, I was talking something, but I wasn't walking the walk. Right. So I, I know that struggle, bro. And so, and yeah, so man, man, going this, through it. Like it, this it's internal, real. the internal dialogue of like, are they looking at that? Or do they see this? Or I don't want to show it. And you know, it's something I still deal with a, a little bit. And uh, when I share that, I don't want anyone watching this to feel bad for me. Like your boy's good. My life, my life is good, but I still deal with some shit with my skin. That's the reality. And uh, I'm, I'm Italian. I'm a little Irish in there too, but I'm Italian. I'm oily. I'm really hairy in most areas of my body other than my head. And that's, that comes with, you know, the territory of you got to take care of your skin. And, you know, I'm also very pale. So in the winter, if something's irritated, you're going to see it. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it was something I had to, to deal with. And again, that I, that I still have a whole routine for, for my skin, mm -hmm. but, uh, to tie to come home with all of this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing though. <laughs> uh, when I moved to the city, I moved to Astoria with my brother. And he would, he had been living here for years. And uh, thank thankfully to him, he he didn't charge me rent. I stayed with him for a year. And there was this little um, barber shop around the corner and I started getting a little bit tighter fade and he made it look a little bit better. But I would see a photo of me at a bar or somewhere out and it'd be at the wrong angle. Like, Damn, that's what I look like. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just an awful feeling. And then you're at home after a few drinks and you zooming in on your phone, looking at looking at, at your hair. Uh, so I knew I was going to have to start making a change soon. Wait, then, so Mike, were you getting, were, were people outside of you noticing it and saying things oh, or was it just internally? Yeah, Talk to me. Hell yeah. I remember... Well, before that, uh, being in Stanford, Connecticut and seeing someone I hadn't seen in a while, but this happened a few times where people were like, oh, you look, you look different. And it's like, yeah, I gained a little bit of weight and I started losing my hair back off. But it was, I think they were so used to me being in such strong shape at 20 years old with this hair to now 25, 26 years old at the time in the, the midst of partying and losing your hair. Uh, and kind of finding myself, right? I, my beard didn't look the way it does now back then. You know, it's a whole, a whole process. So when I moved into Manhattan, there was another barber I found. And I used to always make jokes to him about one day I'm going to come in here and you're going to shave my head, man. You're going to do it. And he used to always say no. And looking back, he always said no because he didn't want to lose a customer. And the, bar the barber shop wasn't doing that well, I could tell either. But he used to vent to me about it. But it was uh, 20, 2019, August 30th, 2019 was my 29th birthday. I knew going into that day that I was going to do it. Now, uh, the other part of it was that night was the rehearsal dinner for one of my best friend's weddings. And the next day I was in his wedding. Now for years, people had now, all my friends had heard about me talking about my hair, stressing about it. And now I didn't tell any of them. So I go into the barbershop. I got an electric shave. Now, mind you, you don't know going into it what you're going to exactly look like with a shaved head. And uh, I know you you can plug the, the Snapchat filter. Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say well, that. Thankfully you know now, <laughs> thanks to the come home Snapchat filter, we can help you out. But at the time, we didn't have that. So uh, I went into it knowing like, shit, I'm going to this wedding. I'm shaving my head shaved my head. Uh, it was, and again, I said, so it was my 29th birthday. And then I drive to my friend's home uh, in Connecticut. And some of them must have been looking out the window when I pulled up. 
Wait, 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 wait. Before we get there, bro, you got you go to the barbershop, you shave it. What's your first thought when you see yourself, right? In, in the mirror? Like, what's that feeling like? That shit look good. <laughs> that shit look good. My second thought was you need to learn how to manage this better. Because now this was highlighted. Right. And the guy didn't hook me up with a smooth transition, like the, the fade here, right? So yep. it was just like fresh shave, poof. Uh, so I, I'm glad you mentioned that because all bald guys got to know. It's dope <laughs> to have the beard. The beard is dope. But if you're not doing this yet, Mike just mentioned it. If you're not getting the top tapered when you hit the shop, you're not doing it right. You got to get the top tapered and faded in. That's a good, that's a good alley you, Mike. I'll get into my whole routine about how to manscape the beard and everything. But this this was a, a, a moment at the time. So I then, uh, you know, I, I was on cloud nine. I was like, damn, I look good. I should have done this months ago or years ago, right? So pull up to my friend's house later that night. People come out clapping. They're all happy for me. They couldn't believe you know, how, that I looked pretty good <laughs> with, with the shaved head. Uh, what was cool, again, that it was my birthday and the rehearsal dinner. Dinner it turned into a big party. Everyone was grabbing my head and shit. Next day is the wedding. Now I show up with a shaved head in front of hundreds of people that didn't know I did it. And uh, it just it felt great, man. It really, it really felt great. And I remember my friend's dad at the end of the wedding said to me, he came over and he goes, I have never seen one man's head touch so much in one night because everyone was just, everyone wanted to get a piece of it. Right. Which is a whole other discussion. Cause there's times where you don't want your head touched. Like you can't just walk up to me unannounced and touch my head, depending on who you are, but uh, don't, it'll come up unannounced. But at, at this wedding, I was, it was fair game, man. I was, I was happy. Um, so yeah, that was, August 30th, 2019. I've been I've been shaving my head since. Dude, that's a beautiful story, man. And what a way to come home, dog. Yeah, like, man. You, you went, you had a celebration amongst a few other celebrations. Just, that's just a beautiful thing. And to see yeah. everybody welcome you like that. I mean, it's it's no better way, man. As I talk to more, more men about their journey, I always notice that like that positive reinforcement that day that person comes home and shaves their head from the outside world almost mean, means everything. It's a great mm -hmm. way to kick off that new journey. So glad they, they welcomed you with open arms, man. That's dope, dude. But then that journey transitions because then you got to manage this regularly. Talk that talk. Talk that yeah. talk, Mike. Right. So I went, I think I had, it's probably in my bathroom somewhere, but I had, a, I think it was called a Lone Star or a Five Star. Uh, like the barbers would always do the back of your neck with it. And that's ultimately what the guy shaved my head with. Uh, so I used that for a while. Uh, but then what I realized is if like, honestly, I remember my friend's wife said this, uh, soon to be wife said this recently, I came home one time and she goes, I hadn't shaved in like four days. And she goes, wow, you let your hair grow out. I was like, no, I, I just haven't shaved in four days. She's like, but you have so much of it. I'm like, yeah, I got a ton of hair. I just don't have a lot right here. So it looks silly. So I'm just going to shave the whole thing. Right. So the reason I bring that up is that with the electric razor I had, if you waited four or five days, the hair was now too long to use that electric razor. So now you got to buzz that shit down with another buzzer and then shave it. And then it was just this long process. So I used to think, all right, I'm, I'm busy here in the city. I don't have time to kill. So how do we, how do we streamline this process? And that's when I started using a, a, an actual blade. So I, I use Gillette. Okay. I, I shave it every three or four days. Um, it's, it's progressed over time. I, I got mom, my brother about it too, because sometimes he takes forever to, to manscape and take care of the beard and the head will let it go for a couple of weeks. I'm like, I don't, I don't have this. Like I need to be in and out within 10 minutes. Once that water turns on and starts heating up, I want it, I want it to be fast, but you can't be stressed when, when you're shaving your head, I actually put on a little bit of R and B to, to slow me down a little bit, you know? Um, and I start with cleaning up the beard. I get the line up first here and then lather it all up. I lather up the cheeks a little bit. And I actually, I don't know if anyone else does this. I actually start with my beard first and then I hack away and then clean up the back, try to get it all done within 10 minutes. Uh, and that's, that's been my process since now for kind of, I guess I followed that process for probably just over a year. Quick cool question, bro. What are you using on the head? Is it a three, bl three blade, five blade? What are you five using? blade. Five blade, okay. Nice. Five blade with like the little single edge to hit all this. Okay, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Also, question here. Do you feel like as you, you know, 
grown to you mentioned manscaping more, grooming more, having to do that. Do you feel like now you're a bit, you're even more into your skincare regimen as you got older, especially as you went bald, now that you have all this extra skin to take care of that you didn't, yes. you know, in the past? Yes, I use sunblock way more now than I ever did because I always joke like this, this is my look moving forward. So I need to protect this. And so it's when you go to the beach, you got a bucket hat or, you know, when I'm walking 20 minute or if I say it's nice out in New York city and I got to walk over to Tribeca, it's 20 minute walk. I want to take that walk, mm -hmm. but now I got to have some block in my pocket. So I got to protect this because it's getting sunlight every day. So I definitely take care of my skin way better now or have more awareness <laughs> at least about it. Um, but yeah, man, this is, this is my look. And I, I've seen through some of the other videos that, that you've done with some guys. And it's like, when I have a fresh shave, I'm invincible, man. So I, I want everything to be right. I want my skin to be right when I go to shave my head. Yeah, man, it's definitely the moneymaker, man. And it's funny to me because coming up, you know, I, I, I'm a 90s guy. So I came up, you know, waves, do rag going to the barbershop every week to get tightened up. And I used to love that fresh cut feeling. There was nothing better back then. Mm -hmm. And But to, to get a fresh shave now, just a bald head, it's crazy because you still get that same exact feeling now. Even better sometimes. Like it's, oh, it's, it's better. right, right. Better. It's such a clean look. And it's like, man, like I, I, didn't, I didn't know that I would still have this once I came home. I didn't know that I would still get that feeling. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful feeling to still get it. And to your point, sometimes it even feels like an escalated feeling now that oh, you're yeah. the home team. Oh, yeah. Because, like, you're not just – like there, there, there's weeks where you go to shave your head just because, ah, it's time. But other other times that you're doing this for a situation. Like, I'm about to hop on a call or I'm going to an event. And then you walk in. And being that, you know, when did you – how old were you when you started shaving your head? 27 as well. Okay. Yeah. So, or I guess I was 28, 29 when I did, but the reason I bring that up is compared to everyone else around us or our, our friend group, we're one of the first ones shaving our head. So it always gets comments now getting a little bit older. Some, some of your friends are like, you know, we're looking at them like, bro, time to come home. I see what you're doing. It's not worth it. Uh, but you know, we always got comments about it because we're a little bit younger compared to like the dude who lost it when he's 50 years old. And it's like, well, you're complaining about your life at 50. Try losing it at 27 years old when you had beautiful hair a couple of years ago and all your friends still have beautiful hair. All right. So, uh, again, the reason I bring that up is just there's certain moments where you're going to clean up real nice and you walk in the room and, you know, people see it. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And to piggyback off that, bro, you know, there's actually research that's been done that said that bald men are perceived to be more intelligent, more successful, more dominant. So that's the thing. When you do walk into these rooms, you get noticed immediately. That's the thing about having a bald head. Like you, you're not mixing in with the crowd. Like you mm -hmm. are gonna stand out and it's up to you to take advantage of that opportunity, right? Um, and obviously a guy like you, we know you're doing that up in New York for sure, man. Yeah, I don't know about the more intelligent part, but everything else uh, I agree with. <laughs> Oh, man, no doubt, bro, no doubt. <laughs> Mike, man, beautiful story, bro, man. We're going we go to transition now to the second half of the interview, man. Um, got like five questions remaining, man. Okay. First question here is going to be, uh, I mean, you, you kind of just mentioned it a little bit too, you know, being bald, we, we don't really have the opportunity to switch our look up. You know, we kind of got one look. We can grow it out a little bit, get the stubbles, but in general, you know, we got one look. So a lot of bald men would try to switch it up by wearing hats, whether it's a bucket hat, whether it's a dad hat, scully, et cetera. Um, what would you say is your favorite slash go-to hat, bro? Uh, a little bit more sporty, like back backwards hat goes with the workout attire type type look. Okay. Um, a, a few things come to mind with the hats because if there's like a day stubble, that may not feel great with a hat on. Mm-hmm. Right. Or even like you lay your head on a specific type of pillow, you're like, oh, that's a little scratchy. Right. So I think the hat, the hat selection is going to be dependent on the hair length mm. part of it. Right. If it's four days and I didn't have time to shave my head, I'm putting a hat on. All right. But uh, but I have one specific uh, hat. It's a it's my employer motive and why it's this cool, like sporty black hat. And um, I just rock it backwards. And the reason I bring that up is that uh, 
I, I love the look of snapback hats and some fitted hats, but if I, for me, if I turn the hat around, like I think it looks better if someone has the hat turned around and they got a little fluff of hair coming out. For me, mm. you just, you just, for me, you just see a bunch of skin, right? So uh, I got, if it's gonna be a backwards hat, it's gotta fit a little bit more snug, snug on me. And trust me, I, I, I've been there. I know that exact same feeling. Like, like, dang, I'm just seeing a whole bunch of skin through that little yeah. <laughs> horseshoe right there. <laughs> but it's also, you know, like then you get to explore with if you're gonna be in the sun, you get some type of bucket hat. Mm. And now you said so it's made me realize that I get to explore a little bit with different styles. And uh, I mean, I mainly just wear gym clothes, honestly. So <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, whatever goes along with that. Though. It's part of the brand. It's part of the brand, yeah, bro. You know, you know. But yeah, like for sure, when I when I actually had hair, I rarely wore hats because I was getting I was going to the barbershop so regularly that my I was always fresh. So I rarely wore hats. But now today, because I'm not going to lie, I still haven't got to the point that I can shave regularly like i get so frustrated of having to shave so much so yeah. after about three or four days i'm wearing a hat until day seven and then i'll shave again you know what yeah. i'm saying like that's well you actually reminded me of something i never wore hats earlier either part of it was that i always had some type of gel in my hair but the other part of it is that i didn't have a ton of facial hair and i thought i looked like a little baby when i wore a hat i looked so young so but now it's you you had a hat and you got the beard looking on point is so that's a game changer too that's a whole other talk vibe that talk, man. yeah talk that talk <laughs> nice question brody um we talked about your grooming routine already a little bit but I, I want you to talk to me about your favorite or the product that you couldn't live without what's that my art of shaving after shave mm. uh that's actually what put you and i in touch was my friend saw me talk on Instagram about uh, someone had asked in a Q&A about something about my shaving routine. And I, I plugged the art of shaving uh, after shave that I love. And uh, I won't tell you how expensive it is or how much money I spend on it. But I do know that my skin uh, responds to it well after a fresh save and, and keeps any inflammation down. And I always get comments on the smell of it. I never heard of the of the term sandalwood. Uh, but Everyone likes the smell of it when I rock it. So that that's my go-to. No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> shout, shout out to Art of Shaving for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Next question, man. We talked about how bald guys can come into any room and kind of take the stage and steal the spotlight. With that being said, man, I need to ask you, if you had to put together a list of the top four most iconic bald men to go on the Mount Rushmore of bald guys, what four would that be for you, bro? Great question. Love that. Uh, right off the bat, I got to think about Jason Statham. And reason being is I had this one friend uh, that I was closer with in, in this timeline when I started losing it. And he was a little bit older than me. And he used to just send me photos of Jason Statham all the time. He'd be like, look, bro, like you're going to be OK. Or, look who he's dating. Everything's fine. Look what car he's in. So I got to got to give a plug to Jason Statham. Uh, I also got to give a shout out to LL Cool J because that, He's I mean, cool I, I never, I never remember him with hair. You know, I'm sure if we look back, we could find it. But for me, I just remember always picturing him bald and he's always just been a smooth dude and, and easy to, to be a fan of. Um, another one, uh, which is unique to me is Mark Messier mm. and Mark Messier, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, was one of the top hockey players all time in history. Uh, won the first, I think it was the first, don't mark me on this shit, but I think he was the first uh, Rangers championship. I think it was in 1995 or 96. And the reason I bring this up is when I was working at a gym in Connecticut for a couple of years and he was a member there. Mm. And he, I know people would be in, in awe or starstruck when he'd walk in the door uh, and then people would treat him as a celebrity and he didn't like that. So I just treated him as another member in the gym and uh, he became a fan of me and he just saw that I was hustling hard every day and came to work. And one day I just had the balls to go up to him and I was like, Mark, why don't you shave your head? And uh, he told me, he was telling me he was on a, he was traveling, I think to Montreal for a game and he was in this one locker room that had all these mirrors around and he saw this, the back of his head and he just knew right, right then and there. And so he's telling me this whole story, but then he looks at me and goes, you don't need to shave your head though. 
And I'm thinking like, no, I definitely need to, bro. Like, you don't know how much I'm thinking about it every day. The fact that I just asked you about it means I'm ready for it. So I got to give a shout out to him uh, for sure. And then the last, this is going to be the most unique Mount Rushmore that you've heard. Uh, and then the last one uh, from the explicit world, there's a, uh, there's a porn star that my friends reference uh, named Johnny Sins, who happens to be bald. And they've always kind of given me that nickname. Shout out to Joe Ciccarella. He always calls me Johnny Sins. Uh, and ever since the day I shaved my head, he's called me Johnny Sins. So I got to put him up there as well. Hey man, that's not that's not a that's not a horrible alternative career, man. That's all I'll say. Got the look. Oh man, no doubt. I'm sorry, no doubt. mom. Very very dope top four, man, for sure, bro. All right, man. We going into the final two questions here, and um, these get a little bit deeper, man. And it's a that's chance dope. for you to kind of get into some real talk um, for the people watching here, bro. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, if you know somebody was watching this right now, man, because, you know, we, we tell these stories and we have this podcast and this platform to share these stories to hope we can help men who are actually dealing with hair loss. So somebody that's watching right now is still struggling with hair loss, bro. What's the advice you would give them? That's a great question, because I could have used that, you know, uh, I'm sure you could have used that. That's why you're building this brand. And uh, on one hand, it's you're not alone, literally. Like, it's not like we just woke up and shaved our head. This was internal dialogue for years and still can be. And uh, knowing that it's okay to talk about it, find another bald dude that, that you admire, you look up to and, and, and share it with them and, or just come home to us and we're happy to help you through that process as well. But it's, you know, like we, we all go through things in our lives and we all go through things with our bodies. And in the grand scheme of things, losing your hair is not a big one. And actually, it turns, it turns out that your life may be better. And I, I, was telling, um, I was telling a friend yesterday about some things I'm working towards my brand and how all my whole life has shaped me to, to get to this point and what I want to do. And for years, I, I remember one of, the, one of the things that kind of screwed me up probably a little bit as a kid was going to a gym at a really young age and seeing all these jack dudes tan with great hair and i i'd always envisioned that i was going to be like this bodybuilding type or i was going to be on the cover of a magazine and i'm going to be all hairless on my body which i'm not and have all this hair on my head and be really tan uh none of that shit happened and i could not be more proud of the man i am today and i know that what you see on the outside is a reflection of who I am on the inside. And it just, you know, it wasn't easy to shave my head and I wish I did it earlier on. Maybe timing wasn't, wasn't right for me, but you know, we're all human. We all, we all go through it in, in some shape or form, but it's uh, I mean, I'm, I'm thankful to be bald dude. So I would, I would love to be able to share that, that message with other guys going through it or any woman that that's going through some type of hair loss as well. I've, I know a lot of badass chicks that, they rock the short haircut or shave their heads as well. So um, it's it's a statement. It's maybe more confident. Uh, it's also <laughs> it's also been a, a a point of entertainment. I often will if, if there's weird energy in the room, I'll often just deflect to making fun of myself or make a bald joke. It can always be some type of icebreaker. I remember I showed up at an event and I looked around. I was like, wow, every dude in this room's bald. And some new guy walked in the room and I was like, at least everyone here is bald. I, I brought it to everyone's attention. It was just everyone thought it was the funniest remark that that someone could make that day. So, you know, to, to answer your question, it's, you know, it sucks going through some type of struggle with your body. And again, there's a ton of internal dialogue, but you're not alone with it. And uh, come home, baby. Love it. We love that for sure. We love that for sure, man. Um, last question here, Mike. But actually, before we get into that last question, you mentioned something I want to double back on to right quick. You mentioned your brand, and we cannot leave this episode without going a little bit deeper into what you're building right now. So, yeah. Mike, talk to the people about exactly what you got going on up there in New York City, bro. Love it. So uh, I work with a few different things. I'm director of coaching at a physical therapy clinic to start with. That is 
my full-time job. I have a staff of coaches there. I also work with another platform that's a, a fitness and tech platform called Samble that I work closely with. But for the last year, I've been building my baby, which is Slim Thick NYC, uh, AKA Slim Thick, spelled with a K, not two C's. And um, it's, on one hand, I, I started it because I needed to do a little bit of training on the side outside of my full-time job. I live in Manhattan. I like a specific type of life that I want to live while I'm here. So I needed to make more money. And what I always thought was I looked around, it's just like every coach just has another, uh, another name of training or intensity or evolution or something like that. And, and that's okay. But I was like, I know I can do something bigger than that. And I want to build a whole lifestyle brand around what has worked for me. And I want to help other people with it. And that's where Slim Thick comes in and uh, just launched that at, uh, as of February 15th. And that, that was uh, one full year in business. And, and now uh, I put it out in public and shared it with the world. And it's just funny, the timing with it, how it worked out with, with you building your brand. And I think there's a lot of overlapping with what we're trying to do is, uh, is to empower other people, really. So that's, that's what I got going on. A few different things here up in the city. Where can they find Slim Thick, man? Where, where, where can they find it and learn more? SlimThickNYC.com. I also have uh, SlimThick underscore NYC at Instagram. I just started using that. And then obviously my, my main personal Instagram, Michael.Atori, A-U-T-O-R-E. Uh, and uh, you'll see that I, I put out mostly fitness type content, but now shaping some of the brand to be more lifestyle. Awesome, 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 awesome. Y'all heard it here first, man. Go ahead and tap in if you're in New York City. Slim thick. We love that, man. Bro, last question here, dog. And um, I think all this entire conversation got us to this question. That's why we that's why we kind of posted up here the last one, man. So come home. We talk about it in a, in a different, two diff different kind of ways. One way, hey, you, you're going through this hair loss process, you know, you know, give that up, man. Hey, come home, come somewhere where you're comfortable, man. Shave that off, off, stop dealing with the embarrassment, the anxiety. Come home to a safe space, shave your head and embrace that. But also we spell it in French because in French, it translates to English to me, like a man or as a man. And a big part of the brand is to help men embrace their natural evolution. So when you think about what it means today, Mike, to be a man to you specifically, what does that mean, bro? I love that. I didn't realize that that was the background uh, of, of part of the name with it as well. Uh, I stand very firmly on some of this. Uh, I, some of it's things that I've observed growing up, um, kind of modeling myself around what I observed with my father and uh, how, I, how I saw him being a man compared to what I'd see around me. And part of that was, uh, my mom has been very successful in business. And at one point my dad was a stay at home dad and there was other reasons why he was home, but I didn't know any other kids that had stay at home dad that were able to like pick them up at school and, um, you know, and also just be able to acknowledge that your wife's a breadwinner and take a back seat, you know, so to speak compared to what is natural to the rest of life. Um, so I'm, I'm fortunate for being the son of my father and, and, um, uh, being present and being emotional at times. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not being on the boat or going fishing or, or going hunting. And that's okay. If you want to do that, those are hobbies. That's not being a man. Mm. Being a man is managing your business, managing your own health, uh, being a leader. If you got a woman in your life or a partner in your life, being present for them, being responsible for them and, and yourself. Um, you know, eventually I want to have a family and have kids. I think that's, that's all big part of manhood as well. And um, this is coming out of a man that did not always think this way, right? Again, mm -hmm. this is like slim thick has evolved because of the growth that I've had over, over the years and the experiences that I've gone through. So that's what it means today for me to be a man is, is really to be present and, uh, and, you know, to shout out one of my coaches, Mike Ranfone, who I work closely with, I've been telling him everything I'm working on. He's like, man, you just, you, you are the standard. You have to be the standard. If there's something that you're expecting in terms of the respective businesses that you work with, then you got to set the tone and you're the standard. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do with my business and, and my interactions with people is, um, you know, this is, this is me being manly. And I'll tell you what else means manly, wearing some bright ass colors, some purple shit. Uh, some pink shit, 
drinking fruity drinks, some frozen, frozen froze or uh, anything with umbrella in it. I always have my balls busted for years because I never wanted anything to taste like alcohol. And I feel like I was a martyr for everyone else that I, I came in and now all my friends buying frozen drinks whenever we go out. So I, you know, I, I like to go against the grain a little bit and um, to tie it back full circle with some, some more serious stuff is I've been exposed to uh, because of my, the nature of my mom's work uh, to mental illness. And, and uh, she runs an organization that helps people living and battling with mental illness. And it's something that's been talked about in my home. Uh, it's obviously leaked into my coaching with my clientele as well. So being able to talk about your emotions when needed uh, being able to talk about your hair loss when needed, like that, that's part of being a man as well. So. Wow. That. Man, dog, like that, that was the perfect answer. You touched on so many things, man, from accountability, leadership, being the man you're supposed to be for your family, uh, going against the grain and not being afraid to be yourself. Right. I think that's also a big part of it. You gotta be authentic as a man. Um, and I think, you know, historically there's this, there's this thought process of like, oh yeah, Men shouldn't drink colorful drinks or sweet drinks. Men shouldn't do this. Men can only do X, Y, and Z. Well, that's not true. There's no truth in that at all. So yeah. for you to be able to say like, no, I'm willing and comfortable going against the grain for whatever feels comfortable comfortable to me, that's really what it means to be a man. Um, you, you touched on so many things there. Then you talked about the mental health aspect of it, which I think is a big deal. You know, body positivity, all the things that really come to mind that guys deal with 24 seven, but mm -hmm. in the past, maybe society didn't tell us it was okay to talk about, but yep. today they were realizing as we get older, we're realizing, oh no, like society was incorrect, you know, and I do want to talk about this. Um, yep. Amazing answer, bro. Amazing answer. Thanks, bro. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Ball to Ball. This has been another great episode, man. Hey dog, one more time, if somebody watched this and thought your episode was dope and wants to tap in and learn more about Slim Thick, What's to holler at you because they're, they're going through hair loss and love your story. Where can they find you on Instagram again? I would I would just find me at my, my personal account, Michael Atore. It's michael.a-u-t-o-r-e on my, on my uh, Instagram. No doubt. Mike, any last words, bro? Time to come home, buddy. Let's go. <laughs> I love it, man. You all, thank y'all for watching again another episode of the Ball to Ball series. As I say in every episode, y'all stay bald and y'all stay bold. And I'll holler at y'all soon. Bold and beautiful, baby. Later. <laughs>